Thank you, sir. Uh, chair recognizes Ms. Stansberry for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uvalde, Buffalo, this week, Sumter, Milwaukee, Tampa. Some of you may not have heard that just this morning up the street in Baltimore. When will this violence stop? Our communities are living in fear. Our children are literally afraid to go to school. When will this body take meaningful action? This includes in my hometown of Albuquerque, where just a year and a half ago, a young man named Benny Hargrove, who was only 13 years old, an eighth grader at Washington Middle School, tragically lost his life. I want to tell you Benny's story. It was Friday, August 13th, 2021. It was only the third day of school. He had just started the eighth grade. Benny was a good student. He was a good friend. He was brave. And shortly before 1 p.m. on that day, he saw one of his classmates bullying another one of his classmates. He stepped in to try to de-escalate what was going on, but what Benny did not know on that day was that his classmate had brought a gun to school. And Benny died in the hospital at 13 years old. Now, just this last week in my state legislature in New Mexico, my own state house representative who is championing these issues at home, Pamela Herndon, just passed the Benny Hargrove Safety Act in New Mexico, and our governor proudly signed it. But people across the country are begging us to take action because our children are literally afraid to go to school. I've heard a lot of testimony this morning from my friends across the aisle calling into question the Second Amendment and the right to freedom and law-abiding citizens. That is not what we are talking about this morning. We're talking about the safety of our children and our communities and about taking meaningful action in this body to stem the tide of violence that is affecting every single community across the country. I want to thank the moms and the advocates and the survivors who I see here in the audience today and who are tuning in here today to hear this farce of a hearing. I want to thank Mr. Wilcox for being here to help represent the voices of all of those individuals here in this hearing today. I've listened to my friends across the aisle take umbrage with our federal law enforcement this morning. These are men and women who put their lives on the line every single day to serve our country. When are we going to take action to protect our children? When is this body going to take meaningful action? That is what our children are asking us. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm deeply proud of the bipartisan community safety bill that we passed last summer. It is the most significant piece of legislation in 30 years because of the impact of the gun lobby, which I'm sure is loud and proud in the background in this hearing today. But we need to take meaningful action. And so, Mr. Wilcox, I want to ask you, what are the actions that we must take to protect our communities? Thank you for that question, Congresswoman. You know, I, I think first we need to be implementing the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and the laws on the books, just like ATF's been doing with ghost guns and with arm braces, with you know, unlicensed sellers who make, who make gun sales without background checks. We also have to keep passing foundational laws, background checks on all gun sales, ensuring there's an extreme risk protection order process across the country, and that people who own guns, like my family, store them securely. Because we know that 80% of the guns that are used in school shootings, those are coming from the home, the home of the parent or family or relative, and that's our intervention point, responsible gun ownership, which I think there is agreement on this dais about, 
um, as well as common sense and constitutional gun laws to keep guns out of the hands who shouldn't have them while supporting our federal law enforcement officers at ATF. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back and I beg my colleagues to take urgent action now.